Hi guys, today I have put together a list of 10 fragrances that are appropriate for a date night. So regardless if you're in a relationship, you're going out with your husband or wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, or if you're meeting someone for the first time or that you've been dating for a while, these are all fragrances that I think would work. Some of them are a little bit more maybe only for women, but most of them I think could be worn by either gender. Uh, I don't really follow those rules, um, but I can't really say what a guy would pick out. Uh, my, the first one I'd like to recommend, these are, by the way, no particular order, um, is Miss Dior, and it's the only fragrance that's more mainstream among these, and it's the only fragrance on, on this list that is actually discontinued. I mean, you can still get a hold of Miss Dior, but not in this concentration, which is Le Parfum. And unfortunately, there's quite a big difference between this one and what's on the shelves um, under the name of Miss Dior today. Uh, so if you can get your hands on this secondhand, uh, try, try and see if you can, because it's so worth it. It is perhaps not the most unique fragrance, but it is so satisfying and so like romantic. It has rose, it has patchouli, it has vanilla. It's a kind of a syrupy, floral, gourmandish, feminine fragrance. And I think it definitely has date night written all over it. I, I picked it up kind of by chance. I left the house and I, was, I, was, I did, wasn't wearing perfume and I just kind of felt like I had to, it was like a wasted day. So I had to kind of like dash into my local perfumery and it was on sale, it was like half price. So I paid literally like nothing for this. So very happy about that. Um, so that's Miss Dior, my first recommendation. The second one is from the House of Perfume Aroma and it is called Aqua e Sucero. And it, the, I think the name is slightly downgrading because it is so much more than uh, a sugar water fragrance, even though it has sugary it has a sugary quality to it for sure. There's orange blossom, it has forest fruits, um, it has vanilla, it has kind of a cotton candy marshmallow kind of vibe, very kind of young, um, but it has like a satisfying sweetness to it and it lasts all day long. The performance is unbelievable. Um, get your nose on that and if you get it, get this size. Don't get the 100 mil because it is so long lasting. It'll last you for 30 years. <laughs> and it's not a fragrance that you'll want to wear every single day because I find that it does, it, does, it does take some energy to wear it. It's kind of like not the most easy to wear fragrance. So I'd only wear it for special occasions. My third recommendation is uh, something I picked up last summer. Uh, it's called Col de Bahrain and it's from the house, uh, it's the French house, Stéphane Humbert Lucas 777. <laughs> Got the names of these houses. Uh, it is an oriental vanillic fragrance that features iris and there's some violet. It also has ambergris which gives it great body. Um, this one, I would never wear like a cold iris fragrance uh, to a date. Um, it would have to be combined with some like sugary notes, some sweeter notes, like Iris Draguet would also work, maybe from Zon Lancome, although that doesn't have the same performance as this. Or uh, Io from uh, Hilda Soliani, uh, it's an Italian house that has kind of a candy vibe to it, which makes it really playful and nice. But this has a little bit more of a seductive quality than, than those that I mentioned. By the way, those aren't really on this list. I just kind of mentioned them for reference. Some of you might have heard of those. Um, this is an oriental smelling iris vanillic fragrance and it also has a Peru balsam so there are definitely, uh, it has a resinous quality to it which I think is what makes it oriental. Um, and then this one is from Memo Paris, it is called Granada and I think this one might be the easiest reach in this list. Uh, it's a white floral, slightly vanillic, slightly woodsy sweet but not too sweet fragrance that also features the note of grenadine uh, which I don't think I've seen in any other fragrance than this one. I think it is very unique. There's also it has an uplifting opening from citrus and it's just I've heard I have a friend that says it reminds him of this one uh, from Miss Dior and it does there, there is some overlapping notes perhaps a little bit maybe of that syrupy quality but this has a much more fresh opening and this is more this is lighter, this is more summery. I think this is definitely more of a winter fragrance because it's so dense and so thick. This, is, it has, this has a sunnier uh, quality to it. Uh, it's lighter, it's more playful, it's flirtatious, it's, it's easy, easier to wear for sure. So that was Granada. Then there's um, Oud Satin Mood, which comes from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjohn, 
Um, this is the most expensive fragrance in my collection. I'd say it is the most, or at least one of the most beautiful fragrances in my collection, although I don't wear it all that often because it is unbelievably overwhelming and um, can be a little bit much for certain situations. I did actually wear it on a date that was kind of a fail. Uh, I was going to go on a dance date. We were going to, you know, spend some time kind of practicing. It was a friend, but there was still something more in the air. And I wore four sprays of this, which is ridiculous. That was just so, I, I was lacking judgment. <laughs> it was just so much. And I, it wasn't like I put on four sprays in the morning and went there at night. I put on four sprays as I was leaving the house. Big mistake. Okay, and I even had a little discussion about it with him and I, I asked him what he thought and he said, no, it's too overwhelming. It's kind of like it takes over. So if I would wear this, I would you know, put it on two hours before leaving the house and I would wear one or maximum two sprays, maybe to a dinner where we're gonna be sitting you know, a little apart from each other. Um, maybe on a first date, I wouldn't even choose this one, perhaps because it's so strong. If I think there's going to be some more like physicalness, closeness, I would not choose this one on first date. I would make sure that the person, you know, likes this because it's so strong and people can be, you know, sensitive in different ways. So it's something to consider, but I just love, love, love this. It, it's created by Francis Kirkchen and he is the guy behind um, bestsellers like Le Mal. And he was, he used to be with Jean-Paul Gaultier and now he is going heading for uh, Dior, the house of Dior, where he will be master perfumer. So Dior has actually gone out and said that they're not going to be making any new releases during 2022 because I, if, and I guess that has to do with it. Um, Kirkjen, Francis Kirkjen will be busy at work, busy in the lab, creating new fantastic fragrances for us all to enjoy. Next one on my list is Le Lion. I've talked about this before on my channel. It's a great ambery, slightly uh, tarish opening. Um, it, there's a little bit of a hint that it could smell like something from a ship, you know, wet woods and tar and, um, it has patchouli, it has, uh, woodsy notes, there's musk, there's vanilla. The opening is a little bit challenging perhaps, and it wasn't a first, love at first sniff for me. I had to go through the phases of kind of like, first I was like, no, this is too much. I wouldn't wear this. This is too masculine. And then it was kind of a love hate thing. And then it was just all love. So as it warms up on the skin, the vanillic tones come out more and it becomes more like unisex to feminine. I think like anybody could wear it. Um, this one I would definitely apply like hours before leaving the house because it has unbelievable performance. Uh, and I might not choose it if I thought, think I was getting, you know, going to get close to, really close to somebody. This would be like more of a first date, but being a little bit at a distance. And if I was going to hug that person, maybe I would avoid spraying on this side. I would, you know, stick to the other side and maybe, you know, my inner wrists a little bit. Not too much. Okay, I'm, I'm getting to the bottom of the list. This is Kaftan, quite recent purchase. I ended up getting the bigger bottle, and that's why I've decanted some of it, because it's really strong. I was going to get the smaller bottle, but they were out. Um, this, was, this was around Black Friday, so I got kind of a deal on this. They, they never go on sale, but I had, at this department store, you know, I had like points that I could use, so that took some of the price off. Um, and also now, since I, I got some money back, since I decanted it as well. So this one is, um, I'm getting a little bit more into, um, I've always been into balsamic fragrances, but now I'm getting into incense as well. And this one is uh, like a balsamic, resinous, incense-y, kind of woodsy, musky fragrance that is, I mean, the incense in here, it doesn't smell like a thrift shop or, or I think, religious. It just, it's just beautiful kind of smoky incense. It's not smoky like something like on fire, but it's just, oh, it has something, it has some citrus in the top, which gives it a little bit of a, of a freshness to it, too. But it has olibanum, it has styrax, it has labdanum, benzoin. Benzoin has a vanilla, you know, like a vanilla uh, vibe to it. It's just so beautiful. It's very unisex, I would say. Um, oh, it's so good. I could wear this like for um, any kind of date night, but I would not wear so much perhaps in case I really knew the person and that that person would appreciate it. And this is a little bit easier to wear perhaps. It is called eroticon. And it's from a very small house uh, from the Czech Republic, Czech Republic called Pigmentarium. And I have two fragrances from this, uh, this, um, this uh, house. 
Uh, and this is definitely an erotic, uh, sensuous, uh, sexy fragrance. Um, it smells of uh, vanilla, chocolate, uh, ginger. And the ginger, I think, gives it a little bit of freshness. I think there's ambergris, which gives it body. It has musk, so it's a little, like, a little animalic. Um, I think it has pink pepper as well. Uh, it's really beautiful, um, gourmand, but not... I don't find it just that gourmand. -y. It doesn't make you feel like a piece of cake or anything like that, because I don't think chocolate fragrances should be too chocolatey. This chocolate is kind of like in the background, giving it depth. And, and it's just... It's just stunning, this fragrance. I think it's just so perfect for a date night. And if you haven't checked it out this house, do it. I know there's only like one other YouTuber that in English has spoken about this, uh, this house. Um, so I hope that maybe this will make other, more people find it. It's available online. Um, okay, so I have now uh, this beautiful fragrance from the house of Zerjoff from Italy. It's called Dajala. And it's not one of their best sellers, but it for sure is one of my favorites. It's, it's an amber vanillic fragrance with a kind of a green, um, green herbal twist to it. Uh, it opens up with some citrus and the note of galbanum, which is one of my favorite notes at the moment. Um, I talked a lot about um, number 19 Poudre from Chanel, which I really love so much. And I also I realized that this also has, just like that one, has the note of galbanum. Uh, and I don't like typically like bittery fragrances, but it's just bitter to like kind of it kind of knocks off the, the the top of the sweetness, so it doesn't make it too sweet. So I think this one just gives it an interesting little an interesting little twist. It has some it has some florals. I think it has rose and jasmine in the middle, and there's some musk, uh, and there's some also resinous notes in here. It's so, so beautiful. The only thing about this one is that it do, I don't smell it myself on myself as much as I would like to. Uh, for example, many of these other fragrances like um, Col de Bahrain or Granada or Kaftan, um, Eroticon, like all of these, Le Lyon, Mistyor, they all, I can really smell myself and I can really enjoy the fragrance. This one, for some reason, doesn't get, doesn't like hit back at me as much as I would have liked to. But I know I've gotten feedback from others that they can really smell it on me. Uh, so maybe it's something to consider, but uh, get your nose on that. It is so good, and since so many, a lot of people are not talking about it, you might be alone. You know, you might be the only one that has it. Okay, and the last fragrance I'd like to mention is um, also from the House of Perfumum Roma, and it's called Suavissima. I find this to be a little bit similar to um, Col de Bahrain, but maybe not as oriental. So this one has... Um, Iris, amber, and white florals. Those are the notes that are listed. Uh, and this one has a little bit of a soapiness to it compared to, uh, compared to this one, which is more oriental and vanillic. Well, this one's also vanillic, but it's not, it's not the same type of fragrance. It, this one is more, uh, it's more of a clean, clean fragrance, I think, and more summery than the other one. Um, this one works really well in the summertime, like outside, um, I was maybe going to a dinner, we're going to be sitting out, it has been hot during the day, then I would wear this, like an out of the shower, kind of fresh, but still, like I wouldn't go on a date, I wouldn't choose like a freshie, because they're too, usually low performance, and at night I want to have something heavier, so all of these, these fragrances that I've mentioned have a certain heaviness to them, um, and a, a seductiveness, and a romantic vibe, and so does this one. Oh, it's just so beautiful. This does remind a little bit of EO that I that I just casually mentioned as I was talking about this other iris this other iris fragrance. Um, EO has a little bit more of a candy vibe, perhaps, and this one a little bit more of a soapy kind of clean vibe. But they're both so good. So that would be my tenth recommendation for date night. So happy dating.